Welcome to Abiding Presence Lutheran Church, a place of grace. All are welcome. Our mission here is to seek God and serve others. One way to serve others is to provide shoes for Haven for Hope. While the peanut butter and jelly sandwich ministry has ended, Haven needs new or gently used shoes for their residents. So clean out your closets and bring them here. We're going to deliver them to Haven at the end of the month. I was out shopping and noticed all the school supplies are starting to hit the stores and we don't know what to expect on that first day of school or even what supplies to get, but we do know what school supplies Lutheran World Relief and Children's Shelter need. Take a look at the Facebook video that's out this week for a list as you begin to gather school supplies. And lastly, we really miss seeing you and sharing our lives together, especially here at worship. Many times in the receiving line, I would hear about the latest joy or struggle. We are, only away, we are only aware of a few people affected by the coronavirus, and we only know when you tell us. We want to serve you through prayer and support, so if you have any need, please reach out and let us know. Let us now turn our hearts and mind to worship God using the service of the Word. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness is yours from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves, and we rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin and fall word and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. By your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in Jesus' life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Beloved and sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from 1 Kings chapter 3, beginning at verse 5. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern good and evil. For who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. But that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind and the spirit, because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? 
If God is for us, who is against us? Who did he who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us? Will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Jesus Christ who died. Yes, who was raised and who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes with us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Word of God, word of life. Hey kids, I brought with me today um, a simple little jar of mustard seeds. We're going to hear about the mustard seed in the gospel lesson in just a minute. And uh, these are kind of interesting things. And I know you can't really see it here in my hand. And, and uh, maybe you can ask your, your family if you have any mustard seeds in your cabinet. Because a lot of times we use these seeds to cook with or to um, add flavor to things. And in the gospel lesson, they talk about this little itty bitty mustard seed. And Jesus says it's the smallest of all seeds, but it grows into one of the greatest trees, the greatest shrub, so big that birds make their home in the nest. And it's a pretty amazing thing when the birds can do this. Now, you are also small. And uh, I, I know that sometimes it can feel like we're insignificant. Sometimes it only feels like I'm only one person. How can I make any difference in the world? But the truth of the matter is, is that even though we might be small, we might feel like we're only one person, we have the ability to do great and amazing things. Whether it's a, a child or an adult, sometimes we feel small. We feel insignificant. We feel I'm only one person. How could I possibly help everybody? But the thing is, is that God works in and through each and every one of us and provides us with everything that we need to serve others. So much so that we can spread God's love all around and it goes to enormous amounts to all kinds of people everywhere. And God's love gets to be made known through you, through a small, ordinary, single person, kind of like a little mustard seed. We'll see you soon. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. And he told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and then hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the, good, put the good in the baskets and threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous 
and will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? And they answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today's gospel lesson is a continuation of last week's gospel. Pastor Bill told us about the parable of the sower and the seed, and he talked about the purpose of religion and the weeds of this world and the weeds of our own very lives. And today, as the gospel continues where it left off, Jesus is preaching to his disciples, and he unloads this, like, litany of parables. And I must admit that all these parables made it hard to focus. I had to reread them a few times just to get my bearings, and as I did, it hit me. At the beginning of each parable, he says, the kingdom of heaven is light. So Jesus clearly must be talking about the kingdom of heaven. And he uses some unusual examples and people to explain it. But before we unpack all these parables, let us pray. Gracious God, you have called us together today to hear your word. May your message be planted in our hearts. Grant us courage and grace to share what we so graciously receive. In your son's name we pray. Amen. From mustard seed to yeast to a treasure to a merchant looking for pearls to finally this net that caught fish of every kind. These are Jesus' way of describing the nature of the kingdom of heaven. Now in the first two parables, Jesus does something peculiar. He says that the kingdom of heaven grows from something that's insignificant and small. From a mustard seed, the so-called smallest of all seeds, grows into that great shrub, becoming a tree for birds to build nests. And then he talks about yeast, that a woman mixes with a lot of flour, which leavens the entire loaf. Now, in the next two parables, the kingdom of heaven is compared to something so valuable that we are willing to sell everything to possess it. Someone finds this treasure in a field, and then he takes that treasure and hides it, joyfully selling everything that he has to go and buy that field. And then there's this one about the merchant that's looking for pearls, finding the best one, and then selling everything that he has to get it. And then Jesus closes all these parables with something about the net and the fish, and the fish which is so much like last week's reading about the sower and the seed. In fact, these two parables bookend each other, describing the nature of the kingdom of heaven, which separates the good from the bad, and he uses examples of wheat and fish. So these parables describe the kingdom of heaven building, uh, budding up from these small places and small things. And it grows rapidly and it grows abundantly, granting fulfillment and treasures worthy of all of our time and energy and resources. And at the end, whatever is good is, is kept and whatever is not is discarded. I'd like to think that, that Jesus is, is speaking and preaching to his followers, preparing them to bear the kingdom right here and now, especially considering what's about to happen to him and what's about to happen to their world. That the kingdom can and will spread from a ragtag group of misfit teenagers. But more so, Jesus and our gospel writer today are also trying to convey to the first listeners a broader connection of the good news of the kingdom, and it's found throughout Scripture. Like in the parable of the mustard seed, the shrub that grows big enough for birds to make their nest, it's not the only time that we hear Jesus speak about birds. He says, consider the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are not you of more value than them? If the kingdom protects and prepares a place for them, Surely the same is true for me. And if I provide for others the same way, I'm ushering in the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Or how about that woman kneading the yeast, filled dough that's, that's making that bread. Jesus is preparing them to see that the kingdom is made known as we serve others, as we feed others so much so that they are about to go out and feed multitudes, not, not once, but twice in Matthew's gospel, and not just men, but women and children too. 
This kingdom is prepared, served, and received even by those most vulnerable in society. Can I not do the same? Am I willing to serve others? Can I be yeast today? Now, the treasure in the field, Jesus speaks an awful lot about treasures. Store up your treasure in heaven, where nothing can destroy it, nothing can take it away. He tells the story about the rich man wanting to be perfect to receive eternal life. And Jesus tells this rich man to go and to sell everything, give it away, serve others around you with your blessings, and you will have the treasure in heaven. And once you've done this, come and follow me. And we all know how that worked out. Jesus also says that where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. These parables, they don't really disregard our needs, saying that we shouldn't have things. They challenge us to use what we have for building up the kingdom, which is hard when we're prone to, to gather and hoard for selfish reasons. Am I willing to sell it all for a greater treasure? It's hard because I'm only one person. I'm just one ordinary man. But did you notice what Jesus does? He describes the people that are bringing the kingdom, and he does it somewhat subtly. He uses a sower of seeds, a farmer. He uses a woman that's just baking bread, a merchant. He uses a, a fisher. These are not people that are part of the upper, upper crust of society. The kingdom of heaven is made known through ordinary people doing ordinary things. Which means that the kingdom emerges from us, is here and now, in everything that we say and do, no matter how ordinary we may think it is. Now lately, lately things have felt anything but ordinary. There's this invisible and minuscule virus that has grown into something large and all-encompassing. COVID-19 has been amazingly destructive, forcing us to isolate and, and, and to quarantine, harming, hurting, even killing people, and not just in one place, but all over the world. It's taken over almost every conversation. It's been the determining factor in, in decisions about gathering safely. It's become the thing that weighs on our hearts and minds, taking all of our attention, causing such grief and anxiety. It's pretty amazing how something so small could affect us in a big way. Now, I, I don't think that the kingdom of heaven is like the coronavirus. But I do pray daily for those that are affected by it, uh, that are grieving from it, and I, and I pray for a cure for it. But I do think that if something this small can bring forth such destruction, I can't help but wonder about the glory that can come from ordinary people bearing the kingdom of heaven in everything that we say and do. For when we share even a tiny seed of faith with others, it does grow into a mighty tree. When we mix a little bit of our faith with that Holy Spirit that we've been given, and we share that with others, it's infused in every word and action, and we are all changed forever. When we serve others like they are the greatest treasure around, we are showing the kingdom of heaven to the world. Jesus is preaching to us today, preparing us to bring it right here, right now, especially considering what's happening in our world. The kingdom of heaven is made known, and it's made known through you and me, ordinary people doing ordinary things. Amen. <laughs>
confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Merciful God, your reign is revealed to us in common things, a mustard seed, a woman baking bread, a fishing net. Help your church demonstrate to others the surprising yet common ways you encounter us in daily life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your word gives light and understanding. Increase our awe of your creation that we learn to live as grateful and healing caretakers of our home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your spirit guides us to think creatively. Bless the efforts of scientists and researchers, especially those seeking a vaccine. Guide your churches in the use of technology and show us during this time ways to study your word and stay in community. Bless our church leaders as they face challenges weighing ministry and safety. Reveal yourself to us in ways both traditional and surprising and in places old and new. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your wisdom gathers the nations of the world as one people. Direct leaders of nations to build trust with each other and walk in the way of peace. Move us away from racist attitudes and policies. Fill our elected leaders with the wisdom to speak with honesty and to strive for justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your advocate strengthens us in our weakness. Help us when we do not know how or for whom to pray. Give comfort to the dying, refuge to the weary, healing to the sick, especially those who are dealing with the coronavirus or access to health care. Accompany those living with anxiety and despair. Form us, your church, to be your arms of mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your vision and steadfast love direct our path. Guide all schools from daycare through graduate school to find an acceptable way forward. Refresh us with new dreams of being your people in this time and place. And at the end, gather us with all your saints in light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Would you please take a moment to share Christ's peace with those around you? Text somebody, send them a message. Christ's peace be with you. 
Small and ordinary things can do amazingly big things. From faith like mustard seeds to your gifts shared in and through abiding presence, lives are changed and the kingdom of heaven is made known. Thank you for your continued generosity. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Your word is a light for our path. Nourish us through this gift that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. We now continue with the thanksgiving for the word. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into the darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life. Through Jesus, your word made flesh. You speak to us and call us to witness forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. Faithful to your word, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, for your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Be at peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Amen. 